all of us wanted to steal it. It was that good. They took it to the next level to bring a whole new layer of meaning, of context, of the times. Of course, we all have this secret wish to change the world with a poster. I think it's the, the simple one, the joyful, to remind me how, how to uh, live and how to think about the future. <laughs> Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, we're here to discuss the judging of the graphic design category of the DNAD Awards. Um, and we have Benny Au, Design Director of Amazing Angle Design with us. Samuel Mensah Bonsu, Creative Director at Creator Supply. Emma Barrett, Global Ex Executive Creative Director at Wolf Ollins. And Maya Rosenfeld, who is Chief of Design at Nord ID Riga. So um, these judges have been judging the graphic design panel and they've all chosen a work to talk about. Um, so I think we'll spend sort of, we'll go through in turn and talk about each project that you've chosen, why you think it represents creative excellence, what kind of themes came up in the, in the judging process. I'm really interested to know your, the factors you were judging on. Um, and then afterwards, we'll just have a general discussion about, you know, how the, how the process went, what you thought of each project and what they say about the kind of time we're living in as well. So maybe Sam, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. Great. Um, so the uh, the piece I selected was the Prada Pajamas Invitation. It's yeah. It's official title. Um, the um, Prada Fall Winter 2022 Menswear Invitation designed by Zach Group. Um, and the reason why I was say initially sort of led to this is because of the fact that, you know, there was all the premise around, you know, what can an invitation look like? You know, what should an invitation look like? Um, and with the pandemic, you know, uh, designers had to be a bit more ingenious and a bit more intuitive in terms of just how they sort of got the point across, right? So um, I've never seen an invitation like this before uh, to this caliber. Um, and it wasn't the first of its kind in a way, you know, So, because so, um, when I started to actually sort of delve into, you know, the fashion world and like what's going on, you know, like in the, the innovation that's been happening sort of lately, like in the past few years with it, um, I actually realized, you know what, you know, designers have been doing this, you know, in fact, even just yesterday, um, Balenciaga, you know, they, they, they did their uh, latest collection in the New York Stock Exchange. Um, mm -hmm. and the invitation was a stack of money, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, oh, that's cool, you know, like, and everything, um, the, the layer of meaning was there, of course, but um, Prada felt took it to the next level. Um, some also say, actually, Balenciaga are the pioneers of this sort of avant-garde sort of style of, you know, realism and, and um, um, out of the box sort of thinking when it comes to invitations. Um, it just so happens that Prada it's the actual sort of entry in this case that we're discussing. So, um, you know, in that regard, they, for me, they stood out in the sense that they took something, you know, that's meant to be uh, something very 2D, something very traditional, so something very, very expected in terms of an invitation, you know, we expect card, we expect uh, a nice font, you know, like we expect, you know, um, um, some nice paper stock, but well, that's about it, you know, the, the ingenuity, like an in innovation sort of stops there. Uh, they took us to the next level to bring a whole new layer of meaning, uh, a new layer of context of the times, and a whole new layer of execution and quality as well, you know. So um, the, these pajamas are not just, you know, something that you read or, or look at or, or use once and throw away, you know, this is something that will stay probably, you know, like in the glass box for certain people, you know, like, uh, and be framed, you know, like and be uh, a very key piece of memorabilia for certain collectors, you know, like or aficionados in the fashion world, uh, you know, like, and that's something to marvel at as well, basically, is that, you know, you're taking something that typically is thrown away as soon as the event ends um, and made it something timeless, you know? So when you actually delve into the actual garments itself, you know, let's inspect the graphics and inspect, you know, the actual sort of type setting and like illustration, you know, um, you know, they've actually developed a custom typeface, you know, for the actual paper aspect of, of the invitation too. So it's a few components, um, the actual garments itself and the physical invitation as well that comes with it. They developed, um, the best book typeface for it. Um, um, they enlisted the help of Peter De Potter as well, um, uh, an illustrator 
that works with Ralph Simmons um, uh, quite a lot uh, to do the illustration uh, of the emblem on um, um, of the Prada logo type. You know, so there's two characters, the silhouettes. You know, that's Peter the Potter, and I believe that's meant to depict um, Mitchell Prada and and Ralph Simmons or something. Also, the, there's a key history there essentially, right? That that um, that uh, true Prada aficionados we get to understand, you know, that, that level of detail is, you know, like it, it really is impressive. Um, and just the execution and simplicity of it as well, you know, it still feels Prada, it doesn't feel forced, you know, and it feels like, okay, they've done something very, very classic and very, very clean as well, you know, like, and it fits with the overall aesthetic of what they're going for, um, you know, and we had to uh, unanimously say, yeah, this deserves some level of awarding, you know, and, and, um, um, and rightly so. Um, I haven't really seen entries like this in previous years for DNAD either. So it is very refreshing to see um, something like this, especially in the graphic design entry too. You know, so so um, that's very impressive. I think what took it over the edge, you know, in terms of the team sort of understanding that, like, you know, this is actually a very impactful piece of work was just the layers of understanding and the layers of contextual uh, delivery as well. You know, the fact that this show happened during the pandemic, you know, when everyone was at home, you know, during lockdown and things like that. And we couldn't actually go to uh, fashion shows, you know, they're all online, you know, they're all remote, you know. So um, the idea of uh, previewing the latest collection from your bed, you know, like on your MacBook or like a laptop in your Prada pajamas, you know, and being part of the experience in that way, chef's kiss, you know, in terms of just how to bring that experience and bring that feeling of you, um, uh, uh, not only bring at, being at a Prada event, but also wearing Prada uh, garments as well, you know, to, to really make the user and the customers still feel as part of the event as possible. A lot of brands and a lot of organizations and a lot of, you know, uh, companies try to find a way to retain the feeling. How do you retain the feeling of, of being online or being remote, you know, and still bring in that experience and, in fact, even heightening in it as well in some way, you know, they, they went above and beyond to actually bring that experience and, and actually sort of ensure that, you know, you can actually still feel like you're there, front row, yeah. you know, experiencing these models and experiencing, you know, the runway, you know, like and everything around it, even though you're just in your bedroom, you know, with your minty right next to you as well, you know, so, so that was how they did it, you know, like, and that level of execution as well, like, and thinking behind it is the reason why, yeah, you know, we selected it. Um, um, and there's a reason why I'm talking about it for so long as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We'll come back and ask you more questions yeah. about it, but maybe we'll go to Emma next, who's chosen Camouflage Against the Machines by Dentsu Tokyo. Hi there. Um, first of all, I can't tell you how great the work was this year. There was so much good stuff to, to choose from. So yeah, as you, as you said, the piece I chose was um, called Camouflage Against the Machine, and there were no words to describe how cool this piece of uh, work was to the point where we even considered all of us wanted to steal it. It was that good. Um, and what it was was a piece of graphics that was applied to a variety of products. So um, a bag, a jumper, a skateboard, a beer, can, badges, stickers, etc. And the reason for this was to um, help people avoid being detected um, by surveillance camera cameras. So by AI technology um, in Asia, which is a, is a major problem as people are monitor, heavily monitored as they go about their daily lives, whether they want that or not. And what really stood out for me, apart from the fact that it was so cool, um, was that it was, it was using design to tackle a modern day problem. And it was raising this question, can we use design and, and creativity to change people's relationships uh, with technology? as opposed to doing it the kind of, you know, the standard way people would protest and they would go out and rally. Um, and But instead using, you know, art and design to, to take a different stance, which um, which I thought was in, incredible. So this idea that, you know, yeah, these underground movements or these movements tend to be where people go underground or people try and avoid being detective. What I liked is people weren't hiding. They were just hiding from the technology uh, and from the machines. So that's why it stood out for me. Both levels, incredible of craft, so beautifully executed um, and, and tackling this real world problem. Um, and also like 
camouflage isn't new, is it? It's been around for a long time. They used it in boats to avoid radars, they used it in, in the army, but it was it was using camouflage in, in an original way. And that's part of how we're judging these great pieces of work. It's not just on the craft and um and whether, whether they're original in their thinking, whether their ideas are stand out. So that's why it stood out for me. Thank you so much. Um, and let's go to Maya, who has chosen a project by Ogilvy Africa. Yes, I chose a project um, called Lesso Lessons, and um, it was really special and stood out to me, mainly because of this aspect that I'm also really kind of looking at design projects in general, like how influential they are in the local communities and, and what can design and, and designers actually do to change something and of course we all have this uh, like you know secret wish to change the world with a poster kind of <laughs> and uh, and i think this project that through a traditional thing is really changing how mothers are gaining education about how they should feed their babies um, according to the age um, we just thought it was brilliant of um, like not adding something new, like not like putting them through a program or, you know, how sometimes governments try to do that, uh, of like adding new rituals or new things they have to do. But this is actually taking something that they already have done through many, many generations. And, and it is a symbol of, of actually giving giving it through the generations. So this also comes to how we can talk about information design right in a in a very new and um, and actually local and, and inspirational way where, where it's not like trying to put a computer in front of them or any other things that would be not natural but something that already exists and so using design similarly to the camouflage project but just tackling a different problem tackling a problem of education and malnutrition in 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 mothers in Africa. And uh, we just thought it was brilliant, both from um, terms of execution, like there were these small details that I personally <clears throat> kind of noticed, like let's say the typeface, maybe outside of this context, like I wouldn't love it, right? Like it, it would seem like it's so like, I don't know, maybe a bit too close to comic sense or something like that. But in this context, uh, together with, the illustration that also was uh, kind of inspired by the local community together with the colors and, and just the, the craft of the traditional culture it just everything kind of came together and um, maybe we didn't want to steal it <laughs> but similarly to that like uh, we were very very much as a as a jury just uh, kind of from the very very beginning um, really inspired by the project and what you can really do with it so yeah, I think community, giving voice to community, education, like those are kind of the the key keywords and, and of course the impact on on the community. That was what really stood out to me in this project. Yeah, it's a beautiful project. Um, so can we go back to Benny now? And um, you've chosen a project by Sea Change Studio. Yes, as I'm going through the three days, we have gone through about the 500 entries. Uh, for the judging, and some is still in uh, still in my mind. I can remember, but uh, one of the one of this is the is a thing packaging. Is I think is the first impression is is so simple, direct, and interesting. His creation is all about the form and innovative structure. It's a basic. It's a it's a crop. It's a it's a cardboard. The wording, the wording is called the cardboard engineers. It's so interesting for me about the the, the engineer, made me so curious. Um, and the engineer have a box head and a human body. And the box head is a diff, in different form made by the raw material of cardboard. No decoration, only die cut of eye and mouth. It make me smile and the images remind me we need to um, have a funny and joyful and human life to face the problem daily, especially in this time. So I think it's, uh, it's, it, it's make me so, so happy in this piece, even though uh, it's not 
just only it, it is it is a simple one as uh, I think in this moment the many designer the topic is about more serious the one but I think is the the simple one the joyful I think is we need in this time to uh, to remind me how how to uh, live and how to think about the future yeah yeah I think Thanks. it's they're four so different projects. Um, I'm really interested to know, um, first of all, I guess they, they represent graphic design going beyond the page for all of, for me, you know, they're going into all these different media um, and they're, they're trying to sort of cut through noise in a way. I imagine graphic design at this time, uh, when our lives are so saturated with imagery, these projects have sort of tried to connect with their with their reader by um, going, you know, outside the box in a way. Um, and I wanted to ask you, Sam, uh, going back to your Prada uh, choice of Prada, um, do you think that obviously, I mean, fashion shows, obviously editors are, are receiving hundreds of invitations. Um, do you think that we're gonna see more kind of experiential dimension to graphic design, to graphic design apply, applied to garments or, you know, something surprising, more surprising than just the card invitation that we're used to. Do you see graphics sort of like embracing this sort of other dimension? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I feel like in general, I feel for so long, um, the elements of graphic design has been very unsung, you know, in the world of fashion, you know, graphic is a, is a key pillar of fashion, you know, for, for, for a lot of designers. Uh, they come from graphic backgrounds, in fact, even architectural backgrounds even as well. So for a long time, I feel like that element has been unsung, you know, like and not been celebrated as much. And I feel like, um, you know, with all the ideas, there's always a graphic sort of beginning and a graphic sort of uh, storytelling with all the invitations, you know, like, and some of the key brands these days, you know, they're, they're very graphic heavy, you know, from, from Balenciaga to Gucci to, to, um, uh, to Chanel as well. You know, they, they, they all have a very sort of, strong graphic background so i feel like in essence moving forward um we live in a culture as well where you know it's all about grabbing attention and like and grabbing the moment seizing the moments as well so there are going to be more spectacular sort of attempts to to create new dimensions you know like a new sort of layered meanings or when it comes to these invitations um when it comes to creating new kinds of experiences that really capture the moments you know and really tell a, a different story when it comes to you know showcasing uh these new fashion collections. So yeah, to answer your question, um, definitely I see more of it happening. And I, I think it's great that we're finally beginning to see, you know, the, the, um, um, the key role that graphic design plays in fashion as well, you know, so um, I look forward to seeing just how that evolves and continues to be celebrated as we go on. Yeah. And Emma, you said it was a, a really strong year. Um, I wondered what you thought the project said about the time we're living in now. So you all kind of touched on it, obviously, and Benny spoke about joy and how, you know, we've lived through this hard time, um, but also we have so many big issues that we are grappling with in this year. So Emma, I wondered, what did you think all the projects said about the time we're living in? I think, I think a lot of them are, uh, are asking us to, probably very similar to what Sam said, to rethink about the role of graphics and what graphic design is there to do, like graphics, we know is essentially about communicating um you know and whether that be communicating for a book a cover or, or a piece of graphics but it, it's saying that we should just go beyond the way that something looks and actually get designed to play a more meaningful role um in our lives and i i think i saw throughout like the projects um that people were trying to test the limits of what you could call graphic design and what what graphic design um could do and and also i think because we'd all been trapped indoors for 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 two years, quite two years, something insane. I think people wanted to put this positive spin on what you could do with design, use design for good, use design to educate, use design to make the world um, a better place. And I think going forward over the next few years, we'll define the role of graphic design even more, and whether even graphic design will live as an actual term as it kind of merges into to something else, as you know. As you pointed out, none of the, the pencils were the traditional form of graphics. So there were no books, like books, posters, like record covers, all the things that back in the day we would have said were graphic design. And they're very much moving into these new um, 
new roles or, or new definitions. So I think, yeah, I think we're, we should be questioning what the role of graphic design is going forward. Yeah. Um, and Maya, I got so attached to the project that you chose because it just um, seems to me that in terms of social impact, it's kind of the one that's really a matter of life or death. You're kind of educating, it's using graphic design to educate women about nutrition in areas where um, the media doesn't reach them or form other traditional forms of kind of communication can't reach them. Um, I wondered when you were judging all of you, how did you kind of, um, what factors were you judging on and how did you sort of keep like, how could you judge say a project about um, social education next to some pajamas by Prada? Like what, how did you sort of um, set yourself the, the, the criteria for judging? Right, yeah, of course, uh, each project is very unique in, in its needs. And so one of the main things that we were looking at was really like, how does it fit for purpose? Like. The three, the three kind of main things were, is it inspirational? Uh, is it brilliantly um, kind of created? And then does it fit for purpose? And, and of course, each context and each purpose is different. And so just looking at how that particular project works with its audience, with its community. And so the strongest ones we can say made to the top, right? Like where we saw where, where the impact and, and the purpose is really like just tackled 100%. And um, I think it really like, just to add maybe to the previous point also, our longing for the physical um, kind of world um, definitely was also highlighted in this project. And then we can kind of see that for some of us, we, we do live in this digital age, but then for other cultures and other contexts, actually the physical is the only way how to reach them. And so I think, um, not trying to to push western values or western rituals onto communities where it doesn't make sense i think also was great about this project so for the designers to really kind of i don't know step in the shoes of the community of the audience that's going to be just um, even more important and you know not trying to be in, like ignorant and, and arrogant in that sense i think this project for sure highlights that yeah, I think um, kind of cultural sensitivity is something that uh, sort of came up for me in that project that, you know, we've, we sometimes see advertising campaigns or graphic design projects which don't land because they just, there wasn't somebody around the table when when that was being thought up that had the perspective to say, hang on, this just won't work for this part of the world. And that really struck home that, um, yeah, I sort of like, going forward, we all need to be more sensitive to all, all, all each other's differences. Um, and Benny, you said that there were so, so many entries that you had to judge from. Um, I wondered, is there any kind of things that you disagreed on in the judging that you kind of um, had to sort of like fight each other for to say, no, hey, this is brilliant, or no, I'm not keen on this because of X or Y? This, uh... Of course, in, in around the, the entries, uh, we are we are go deeply under to understand the, each entry. Maybe some is uh, not uh, it not go to the level of the DNAs, and uh, I think it's nowadays I, I I see the the trends some trends of the design in in the in nowadays is uh, going to to more for me just to more com computerized, you know. So everybody use the same uh, software and the same filter to make the same images. So uh, I just uh, just remind or not, not just say in my remind or we, we just talk to our, our, our team to, to think about what, what is the graphic design and what is the creativities and uh, how about the uh, 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 unit and all, all about how about the, um, the influence or the, making the new trends in the in the coming the entries, what we can find to, to make it uh, for a pencil or something like that. So uh, is I hope I can uh, I hope uh, the the coming design or the trends will uh, will not only rely on the computer ones and also we need to um, how to say is to uh, to use your hand to feel the the texture. 
the paper or uh, the uh, print and tiny or something like that, not only on the screen. You know, nowadays the designer only on uh, using the computer, using the the, the, smooth, the screen to uh, create the, the design and also the animation or something like that. But of course, some is a digital uh, artwork. You need to use the computer. But after this is uh, we 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 also used to touch the well. You know, I just mentioned about the. Uh, what I choose uh, to talk about is a thing uh, packaging that I like because uh, it's not a new one, you know. Sometimes you can you can see the similar similar images maybe in, in the other other creative. But nowadays I think is uh, I, I need to uh, talk uh, uh, tell everyone again about uh, what what the graphic design is and we need to touch with the uh, with the world. Yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean that's interesting that. Um... Yeah, you mentioned coming off the screen and sort of like reconnecting with the physical graphic design in its physical form. Um, so I wonder, there's so many tools now online um, and, and software that anybody can be a creator, right? And obviously social media has fed this where people are making their own imagery, playing around with their own type. Um, so really what like the profession of graphic design has it had to sort of respond to the fact that lots of people are creating themselves? Is it kind of following, you know, trends are already emerging so quickly online now that, you know, sort of we see that lots of similar visuals um, being copied and, you know, templates being used. So is it is it kind of harder to be original for, for the profession of graphic design? And that's really a question for, for anyone who wants to answer. I don't think it's hard if you take the effort to kind of look outside the, the Pinterest or the Instagram bubble. I mean, there's a reason like trends that we, we see in the trend of the same typeface, the same animation filter, or the same color palette over the last couple of years. That's because we've all been trapped. We've not been able to go out and have those experiences, those passions that we then bring back into our work. And like, like we all said it when we were there judging, just kind of how like, like energized and inspired and excited we were to be amongst each other, but to be amongst all these incredible pieces of work. So I think as like, as the world's opened back up again, and people are traveling and people are going places and having these experiences, we'll start to see things stop looking the same. And I think most designers within the industry are aware that things are looking the same and are trying to rebel against it. And I would say, just because that it's easy to be a graphic designer by having the software, there's so much more to design than just the output. There's also the original idea behind it and the meaning or the role that, that what it is that you're executing, whether it's fit for purpose. So there might be a lot of designers, but it doesn't mean that those designers are good designers. Yeah. And you also mentioned, Emma, that you wanted to steal some of these um, projects or you, you like the Dentsu one so much. Is it that you um, you wish you had that brief or you wish um, were, were there any briefs that you saw that you thought, oh, I would have. I would have loved to have this, but I would have taken it in a different direction. Or like, what did you kind of, um, what did you find inspiring about the kind of briefs that you saw in, on in the judging? First of all, that piece of work, I wanted it for many, many reasons. Um, <laughs> other than it was just, it was the quality of the, of the, uh, the quality of the design, like the actual the graphics, kind of fast graphic piece, but also the quality of the material, and then the bigger idea with the role that it played. Um, and it was original like that's what that's what we were judging this I'd never seen anything like this before and therefore being a creative we all kind of want to stand out and be original um, and in terms of like briefs and um, many that I'd wished I'd done probably the the old school graphic designer in me wish I'd got my hands on one of the book briefs I actually thought that a lot of the book stuff was was actually it was good I mean none of it won a pencil it's not like it was that standard but it, it was good it was of a good um, standards so I just wish people had been a bit more experimental in the formats for a book you know that you tend to see the same a5 or open uh, binding formats or beautiful kind of paper stocks which are all great but also you're not limited to the, the standard paper folds so I'd have liked to have seen a lot more experimental around that. And Maya did you um, was there anything that you wish that you could steal or any brief that you noticed that you thought oh, okay I could have got my teeth into this? <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a good question actually. When we kind of got to the more serious pencils, right? We we did discuss this, like whether this is a brief or a result that we would actually would love to stand 
by ourselves and, and put our names behind it. And I think it was a good kind of lens to look through it. And, and, and uh, yeah, we as judges, uh, we had some, uh, <laughs> some discussions about uh, several projects. Uh, there was this one that was kind of, uh, I wouldn't say controversial, but kind of um, we had, we had this I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't want to say fight, <laughs> but there was this uh, amazing uh, family um, family project um, that we all kind of both fell in love with, but then started questioning some of the like purposes and, and, and details and elements. But but for me particularly, that one um, stood out in terms of the attention to the detail and and that I think for me personally just. Uh, spoke because very often I feel like I'm just running out of time to like pay such close attention to detail because like to to really hold this particular book it was like the elements of the tiny tiny like sticker or, or like I don't know the other side of a, of a little posted picture that had the detail and and I think in this time where everyone's so busy and, and running around and like barely holding their schedules together that project probably spoke to me because it's like, wow, like these people actually had the time to just like go crazy <laughs> about each detail. So, so I think um, each project, of course, you know, for us as judges, like we have our own back backgrounds and experiences, how we look at it and, and our own emotional state, right? <laughs> how we're looking at it. And I think um, that for sure, was interesting also in the judging process and just to hear each other's opinions and and I think that's why we really then ended up you know to this uh, really amazing uh, short list of work and then the the pencil selection and it really like none of the projects was kind of um, like we took it really seriously I must say like uh, you know not just brushing over it but uh, but kind of going deep in the discussion and listening to each other and, and that was just a great learning experience yeah I yeah. kind of rambled a little bit I'm sorry no, that's okay um I noticed on the short list there's that you know there's a few really big creative agencies in the in this uh, short list and I wondered about about the mix of larger and smaller players that you saw um in the work and is it always the same agencies who are kind of like you think yeah they're nailing it like each time or is there still room for you know the kind of small studio outsider kind of studio who who takes on a brief Sam maybe you can talk about that like the mix of um size of of agencies working on the on these projects that's interesting I've I mean it's always promising to see the smaller sort of less known brands and entities, you know, get their shine. Um, and I feel like the way DNAD like is positioned, you know, you don't discriminate against, you know, the the um the size, you know, like, like or, or the you know the scale of a certain company. Um, so much so that yeah, you know, time and time again we actually see freelancers, you know, like an individual studio, um, you know, um practitioners win the best awards sometimes you know like and I've always I've always loved that sort of attitude and and sometimes that's just how it is you know sometimes um, um you need less less noise in the room to actually make the best ideas you know like or less of a global structure like a, a global sort of rounds of of red tape you know like in bureaucracy you know to actually create you know the best uh, the best design sometimes so um I feel it's always I feel like it's always um um a very balanced approach in terms of yeah you know the winners and um the the underdogs do definitely get a chance and actually are celebrated a great deal you know for um especially like in the graphic design section too you know um the the uh, the individual practitioners i feel like definitely get their shine and i feel like i love that you know i, I definitely saw a lot of that approach and attitude that they um uh, dna d sort of have to them and Hope it continues essentially, you know, not to say that the big studios, you know, like okay, and the big corporates don't make good work as well, but it's so easy for, for them to just, you know, um, um, obscure everyone else as a, right. of the scale of the work, you know, and the impact of, of it too. Um, and definitely it's, it's good to see that, yeah, you know, um, just a guy in a studio can win three yellow pencils, you know, <laughs> that's possible. <laughs> that's what happened last year, right? So, so yeah. Those kind of possibilities definitely make me yeah 
Can I just add to that? When we're judging, we don't know who the studios are. So when, apart from the obvious, and there is one that's that, that's in there that is obvious because everybody knows that piece of work. The the studio that did the the one that I picked, Camouflage Against the, the Machines, I had no, I won't gonna say who the studio is, but I had no idea who that, that, who that studio was. And when I found out, I was like, oh, wow. Um, and it's the same with the, with the, um, the other piece. Um, it's the lesser piece. I had, we had no idea. It's only when we're like afterwards and you're like, wow, I had no. So we're not judging or going in with a mindset. This is a big corporate company. Therefore, we're either going to be in favor because I work for a big design agency. Um, it's only afterwards. It, we, they really, the work really is judged on its idea, its craft, whether it is truly excellent. And then it's afterwards that we discover whether it's a small or, stu- or a small or large studio. Okay, that's good to know. I think um, that's quite inspiring for an outsider to know that, you know, to, to do inspiring work, you don't have to necessarily take a, a career path that leads you to a big company. You could also be doing it yourself. Like creativity comes from everywhere. It's been nice to talk about how graphic design is the category itself is changing and moving from beyond the kind of traditional 2D notion of a poster, an invite, a book. Um, and it's taken all these forms. So two of you chose garments. And then, you know, there was this like really simple idea of the cardboard box um, from Benny. And then this like very um, multifaceted campaign about camouflage and addressing like such a a futuristic topic, well, a futuristic topic, but also something that lots of people are are having to deal with today. Um, So yes, thank you so much to all the the judges. It's been really interesting to hear about what your criteria was, what you were looking for. And yeah, just such an interesting selection of projects which show the impact graphic design can have um, outside of itself as well.